We got here one greasy York 210 AC compressor. This one here came out of a Kenworth W900. We'll get the tag out of the way. See if we can get that to read that. No. There we go. So this one says ER210L. Right there. ER210L. So the L, that stands for left hand suction. And then we should have a date of manufacture. Looks like 3 of 95. Oh, the camera just does not want to focus. There we go. All right, she's pretty greasy. We're going to turn this into a vacuum pump. Or at least a temporary vacuum pump. Not quite sure yet, but it's got the fittings I need on it. Right there. Got the old R12 fittings. There and there. And I believe that's uh, some sort of a regulator or something there. We'll get that all cleaned up. But yeah, I have another one of these. They turned into an air compressor. Apparently I've watched some videos on YouTube and they make badass air compressors as well. Which I already have all cleaned up. Sitting right there. That one also. It'll focus correctly for me. That one also is a ER210. L for left hand suction and oh what do you know March of 96 oh it's a few years newer I got that one all cleaned up and let's see we got top of the head there I got the pulley and then if you guys are curious to know what the inside of it looks like for the most part Got the reed plate here. Basically, one side allows air to come in. Oh, here, maybe I'll just pick it up for you. There we go. Allows air to come in. One side, so left would be suction side. And then when it compresses and the cylinder goes back to compression stroke, this valve shuts and this one opens and allows pressure out. So for AC, on the downstroke, it sucks in air, and on the upstroke, it, this valve closes, and it takes the air and pushes it out this valve. And then when it goes back to the downstroke, this one closes, this one opens, vice versa. So one is always closed, one is always open, and then they switch back and forth. That's how you get your suction and compression. And that is all done from this side right there. And this one here, they have a galley right here. So I believe if it's a left-hand suction, that this would be the drilled port and this one's sealed off. And they do that so it can, it's either the suction side or the compression side. I'll have to, I'll have to see if I can. Boy, I am a lot of, at a loss of words today for everybody. I will have to investigate further, but the purpose of that galley is, is it goes down in here into the sump. So basically you put your, I believe would be refrigerant oil in here in an AC system. This one here, I basically tapped a hole inside the chamber and uh, I ran a screw in there and then I put JB weld over it just to seal it off. So when this thing's building compression, that's exactly what it is. Building compression? That it's not compressing into the chamber down here in the crankcase. Or it's not trying to suck the oil from the crankcase into the air system. Can't remember. Uh, I believe it's the suction side. If I am correct, that's what lubricates this bearing right here when the pump's spinning. Which, can I spin by hand? No, not really. But anyway, I'll show you more on my other project there, just rambling on. We got this one. 
Oh, this is data manufacturer three. Oops, sorry. Maybe we can get this to zoom in again. Not liking me very much. Let's try it again. Three of ninety-five. So this one is one year older, but it's still uh. It still seems to spin okay. Why is my phone not cooperating? Much better. Anyway, I don't know if you can hear that or not. Doesn't sound too bad. Seems to be doing okay. And the clutch is... Yeah, feels like it's got some pretty good uh, resistance there. But we're going to find out. I'm going to hook this vacuum gauge up here that I got from Harbor Freight. Along with a 20% off coupon. I got this for about $11.30. Normally they're about, what, 14 and a half bucks. But on the vacuum side. Vacuum side goes all the way up to 25, 26, or so, 28 inches of mercury. And the fuel pump side goes all the way to 10 psi and then if you're pulling vacuum you can get your engine vacuum 20 apparently is a good motor and we can get 25 26 27 28 inches 28 inches of mercury on mechanical and electrical pumps but we're going to hook that puppy directly up to that york compressor before i turn it into a vacuum pump just to verify that we are getting good, good vacuum out of it. We've got to get at least 20 to 25 if we want to rid any moisture in the system. All right, YouTube, we got her cleaned up. Looks pretty good, huh? Yeah, got most of that. This one here had some baked on crap. Most of the grease came off, but I had to scrape a lot of it too. But it come out pretty good, you know, after doing some scraping. And I left these fittings on the top here. And I turned it over. Hooked up the vacuum gauge. And it started, started going up to about 10. And then it started going back. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? That's not good. So spray some WD-40 in there in the suction port, which is L. 210L, left-hand suction. You're staring at the front this way. So I'm like, well, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, I covered all the ports before I pressure wash it so no water would get in. And it's making a gurgling sound. I'm like, well, that's not good. So I go to pull off. Let's see, I pull this one off first. And I don't know if you can see, let's give a better shot there. Yeah, what do you see there? I see some rust. I'm like, crap, that ain't good. Pull off the other one. Okay, well, that one don't look too bad. Suction port there. It's got a nice screen in it. Okay. I'm like, well, I didn't really want to pull the head. Just because, well, I was hoping it was in good shape. And I didn't want the gasket to get distorted. Because I don't have any new gaskets for it. So I'll have to put it together without new gaskets. So... All the bolts. All those guys, half inch, eight of them, and four of those, which I think that was what, three eighths? Five sixteenths. Star drive. Star drive. Uh, you can see it there. Yeah. Come on, focus, you son of a beehive. Anyway, star drive. So then, yes, we pulled ahead. Holy smokes. Look at that stuff. Look at that. Not what I want to see. I'm hoping... Oh, damn mosquitoes. Hoping that I can clean this up. I'm hoping that this here... That's not looking too happy. I don't know if that's fixable. That's... That's pretty grody. That is really bad. So, I might have to take apart my other one that I pressure washed. I decided to pressure wash both that I had. 
And we're going to have to take the head off of that one and see what's going on. But hey, since I got you guys here, try to do this one-handed. I don't really have a tripod, but let's see if the head will come off. Or the valves. Nope. Alright, let's give her a little tappy tap. Give her some love here, see if we can break it free. Come on, baby. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna pause this, be right back. Alright. Took some persuading, but oh there we go. Come on. Come off the dowels. Oh, damn. Was that? Oh, that was a dowel. Yeah, jeez. Oh, shit. It's leaking water everywhere. Let's take this thing outside. Oh, dude. Jeez, mm, that is not what I want to see. And look at that. Nice. Hold on a sec, honey. God, look at that. Oh, dudes. Oh, man. Yeah, time to take apart the other one. All right, back again with the vacuum pump. So, since the last part here... I've cleaned it up, given it a good paint job. Cleaned up these fittings up here. There we go. Yep, got them all nice and clean. Boy, they were pretty rusty and nasty. And got the got the motor wired up. I believe it's the right orientation. Let me give you a see if we can zoom in on that there. Focus. Yep, they give us a diagram there. I'm going to hook it to 120, so I've got to tie all those lines together, which I did. Inside the junction box. And the good thing with this is it doesn't matter what way it rotates. It can go clockwise, or it can go counterclockwise. It all pumps the same direction inside the valving. So, trying to figure out how I can adapt it to this plate here. That plate happens to be just wide enough to put these two on. And trying to make it so this is adjustable here so I can actually tighten the belt on it. Figure maybe I could just grab onto it, slide it over, and then just bolt it down and well maybe I'll just do a you know like a, a threaded bolt or something. So I got the plate down there. That's actually part of the existing horseshoe plate that went it went under and up on this side and up on that side and I just cut off the one side and since the bolt pattern is the same on this side the other side and the bottom all three are the exact same and that one already had slots in it so yeah I didn't have to cut slots so I'm going to put that down there like that these are going to be the runners they're going to go like that and obviously the plate's going to come to the top of this so I can get a wrench underneath and tighten the bolts up and then I made a plate for this guy here. This actually bolts to a gear reduction, a gear reducing box. Like, oh, what is it? Like 64 revolutions to one turn on the box. And another one I got is like 23 or something. Anywho, uh, yeah, that's right over here. So I got that plate here. Cut that out. And that's going to go right in the front right here. Obviously up to the bolts, but that's going to go, and then the shaft is going to sit right here where my thumb's at. And then these guys here are going to be the uprights. Let's get a better view here. That's going to go something like that on both sides. So I'm going to weld it up, and then I'm going to orientate everything on the plate here. And, oh, before I start welding some stuff up, I need to get my hole pattern in there. Make it make it a little bit easier anyway. Instead of having those triangle braces on the side on there. Just be a little easier to work with a piece of flat steel. So yeah, alright. Cool beans man. 
So I'm going to get those holes drilled and I'll show you guys some more here in a bit. All right, here it is. Your 210 vacuum pump. That one over there on the shelf, that's going to be an air compressor. But today, this is what we're focused on. All custom built brackets, painted, and even going to give it the red speckled look in the black there. I don't know if you can quite see it, but yeah, check that out. Tell me what you guys think. Let me know.